morning. morning. It's good to see everyone in worship today. Glad that you're here. If you're a guest with us, we're especially glad that you're here this morning, and uh, we hope you'll feel welcome today. Um, If you are a guest with us, if you would take the visitor cards that are there in the pews before you and uh, sign in and let us know that you're here today, um, fill that out and we'd love to be able to get in touch with you and share more about our church. Um, So you can fill that out and hand it to our ushers in the greeting time or after the service and we'd love to be able to get in touch and share about our church. Also, um, if you have prayer requests, we would love to be in prayer with you. So fill out the prayer cards as well if you have a a concern or a joy that you would share. Um, You can give those also to our ushers before or or during the greeting time in a few moments or uh, after the service, and we'll be sure to be in prayer with you as well. Uh, I'd like to highlight some of the announcements that we've got this week, and so um, you can take the insert that's in your bulletin. Um, Today is Blessing of the Backpacks. We're going to do that at our children's moment time. Um, But it's not just going to be children that we invite forward. So if you are a youth and you brought your backpack, or even if you didn't bring your backpack, um, I'll invite you to come down later as well. And uh, we're going to pray for uh, blessing the backpacks and blessing the school year uh, this year. A couple of big things happening this week um, on Tuesday. And Cindy, make sure I get this right. Just give me a thumbs up if I remember everything. Um, Tuesday at 1 o'clock, we're going to do prep for the teacher's luncheon. It's for staff and for faculty and for administration, everyone. Um, It's at the community center at 1 o'clock on Tuesday. Um, What you'll do is show up here at the church at the fellowship hall at 1 o'clock. We're going to haul a bunch of the stuff over and transport to the kitchen over there. Um, You can bring uh, a knife and a cutting board from home if you have that, and uh, they'll put you to work. We're going to be chopping stuff, get things ready. Um, And then, so if you get there a little after one and no one's there, then just go on over to the community center, okay? All right, and then on Wednesday um, is the luncheon itself, and what time to be there for early, nine? Um, Yeah, we have to stop four pages left, and you can stop early nine. Mm Mm-hmm. Great. Okay. Okay, very good. So they'll be there at 8 o'clock, and then if you want to come in, it's whatever you're able to do so. Bring a knife and a cutting board, help chop up stuff, get ready. Uh, and then serving will be 11 to, 11 to 12.30 or 1, um, but we'll need folks to be emptying trash, um, shuttling things around. There'll be plenty of things to do. It's an all hands on deck kind of thing. So if you can make it, please do. Uh, we'll appreciate it. And it's a great time every year. We love to host the, um, the whole district and to encourage them and to give, send them into the school year with a big blessing. Uh, so that'll be Tuesday and Wednesday. The times are there in um, the calendar. And then on Thursday at um, 8 o'clock to 9.30, MOPS, Mothers of Preschool, is sponsoring a back to school kind of breakfast. Uh, that will be um, for um, young mothers who are dropping off kids at preschool or at school. Um, come on over at 8 o'clock. Um, when you see stuff on Facebook, on our Facebook page, or if you know anybody that might be blessed by that, please share that along, pass that word along um, for this coming Thursday. And then finally, um, a couple of things over the next couple of weeks. Next week, uh, Children's Church will be with, with Miss Laura uh, for the children to learn a song. They'll rehearse on that mon- on the Sunday morning, and then on um, the 21st, the next week, uh, they'll come a little early to rehearse and then sing and worship on the 21st, so we're looking forward to that. And um, the chimes, which we've been able to enjoy for several weeks now, um, we'll have a, an official dedication of the chimes on the 21st as well. We got those installed just a couple of weeks ago or so and have been enjoying that, but we'll officially dedicate them to the Lord and to the witness of the church at that time. All right, at this time, let's stand and greet one another. Find somebody you haven't met yet and tell them you're glad they're here today.
please remain standing and join me in our call to worship. We will praise you, Lord, with all our hearts. We will bow down to your holy temple and praise your name. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Your faithfulness to all generations. Now join me in our opening prayer. Almighty God, you have made us in your own image and crowned us with glory and honor. Grant us your spirit that we may witness to your redeeming love in Jesus Christ, that we may live faithfully before you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing again, 57 in your hymnals. And let's sing together verses 1, 2, and 7. seated. Today is uh, Communion Sunday in our church. The first Sunday of the month is our practice. And so um, would you turn with me in your hymnal to page 12 uh, to the service for Holy Communion. Um, as we prepare to come before the Lord's table during our prayer time this morning, we always pause to remember that the table does not belong to our denomination or to our congregation. The table belongs to Christ. And so all who have gathered here, if you're a guest with us, all who've gathered here are invited to respond to the invitation of Christ. And the invitation is this. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Would you join me together? Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us take a few moments to offer our personal prayers to God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And as forgiven children of God, let us be bold to pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this point in our service is the time when we acknowledge um, God for his provision in our lives and the opportunity that we have to share in the work of the church through our offerings. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks for your generosity and provision in our lives. You have blessed us. And so, Lord, receive the tithes and offerings that we bring. Bless them. Use them to build up your kingdom through the ministries and work of our church. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in our Apostles' Creed, which is on 881 of our hymnal. Let us state what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
for the children now. Y'all come up for your story time. I'm going to bless the backpack. So if there are youth, I've recruited a few who agreed to come down. If I haven't talked to you and you're willing to come on down, I'd invite you to come on down too. y'all very much for coming down. It is good to see all of y'all today. Hey, all right, one more. Anybody else? Anybody else? Going once, going twice. All right, there we go. Very cool. Well, thank you. Thank y'all all for being in church today. Thank you for coming down today. Um, today is an important special day. It's blessing of the backpacks, but really we're kind of meaning blessing of the school year, both for students, but we also want to be blessing all of our teachers, our faculty, our staff, our families who are connected. Um, it's an important time of year and it's exciting time of year. You know that word blessing is really important and we see that all throughout the Bible and I want to read a couple of verses in the Bible that are about blessing. I could pick from so so many um, but there's one in particular I want to pick from that I want us to be paying attention to um, this year and that is I left my glasses on the pulpit. Okay, let's see if we can do this. You know, the way I figured out I needed reading glasses was in church when I pulled up my Bible to do the scripture reading, and I went like that, and I thought, oh boy. So, oh, hot dog. There we go. Thank you. That's better. All right. So, this is from Genesis chapter 12. Thank you all very much. The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Did y'all catch that? It was an important blessing that happened because God told Abraham, that before his name was Abraham, he told Abraham, I'm going to bless you, which meant I'm going to be with you, I'm going to give you things, I'm going to be generous to you, I'm going to love you, and I'm going to stay with you your whole life long, no matter where I call you to go, I'm going to be with you the whole time, you're going to have me with you, you are going to be blessed. So that is really pretty awesome. That's something I think about with school year, with all kinds of things in life, it's important to know that we're, we have the blessing of God being with us all the time. But then the other thing that he said was, I will make you a blessing. You will be a blessing. And that's a really important thing too, is not to forget, number one, not to forget that God has blessed you and that God is with you no matter what you're going through and what you're doing. Whether you're having great times, or whether you're having hard times, God is with you no matter what. But then the second thing is a calling and an opportunity, which is to be a blessing. And so this morning, what I want to do as we pray um, for you, and we're going to pray kind of for everybody uh, connected to going back to school, is um, pray that God will bless you and you, and also that God will make you a blessing too. Because when you show up to school, you know that there are people who um, they need to be, they need a blessing. They need somebody to be a blessing in their life. They need somebody who can be a gift from God to be a friend, to be a friendly face, to be a smiling face, to be somebody who can be a positive influence to help kind of lift them up when they might be struggling and having a hard time. One of the most, um, one of the most important things you can do is to be on the lookout for people who might need to be, have a blessing and to go and to pay attention um, to them this year, okay? So um, we're gonna pray as you go. We've got a carabiner you can stick on your backpack as a reminder uh, that you are blessed and as a reminder to be a blessing to others too okay so let's pray and I'm gonna do it kind of like we do in baptism or confirmation and we're gonna pray and I'm gonna have us all say amen at the end to add our whole like so that we're all saying the prayer over our kids also over 
our faculty, our staff, administrators, those here and those worshiping other places or in our community. So let's pray. Can y'all pray with me? Put your hands together. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for showering your blessing upon us. Keep our eyes open and our hearts aware of when we can be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let the whole church say, Amen. All right. Good job. Here you go. Well, our scripture reading this morning is from Romans chapter 12, from Paul's letter to the Romans. Uh, the next two weeks, we are, um, we are looking at um, growing in grace and what it means to, to grow in grace. Um, so we're going to look at our, uh, think about our church's mission statement, which is leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus. Um, but we're also going to look at, well, what does that mean exactly? What are, what are we doing to help that, help that happen? And so that's what we want to pay attention to um, the next couple of weeks uh, here. So Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Hear the word of God for you this day. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? O oh God, we give you thanks for your word made flesh in your son, Jesus Christ, and for your word in the scriptures through which you reveal yourself to us. And we pray in these moments together that you would speak your word, that you would write your word upon our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit at work among us. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, let me ask you a question, and I don't want you to answer out loud. Don't even raise your hand. Just think about it. Have you ever run out of gas? Now, you don't need to answer. Out loud, some of you are saying, no way. Some of you are saying, I'm glad he didn't ask me to raise my hand because I wasn't going to do it anyway. <laughs> I was on the way to a job interview. Oh, yeah. In Northeast Texas um, with a mentor of mine who was trying to help me get a job. And on the highway right outside of town as I was getting close and pulling in, Everything just kind of, and I looked and I realized I had cut it way too close, and I was out of gas. Now, um, the bottom line is I don't remember anything about the like the interview. I know I got there. I know we had one. All I remember is running out of gas on the way to the interview, and I wish I could say that's the only time I ever ran out of gas. Now, it's been a long, long time. It's been a long time. But I've done it more than once. In fact, I think I've done it more than twice. It reminds me a little bit of a seminary professor who wrote a book called If Experience is Such a Good Teacher, Why Do I Keep Repeating the Course? 
I don't know why, I guess I was just sort of a slow learner, you know? Um, but again, it's been a long time, so I feel like I'm making progress. But um, I was thinking about that because one of my favorite lines from the author C.S. Lewis, who's kind of one of my mentors in the faith, um, he said that we are created by God to, uh, we run on God the way a car runs on gasoline. That we're made to run on him and we can't run fully and effectively without him. And it, that sort of summarizes in a very simple way the whole reason for our mission as a church which is simply a paraphrase of the Great Commission. The way that we phrase it, just in very simple terms, is that our purpose as a church is leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus. Now, that has two parts, leading people into a relationship with Jesus and leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus, which means that purpose is always at work in every one of us, you and I both we can always be growing in our relationship with Jesus. In fact, we better be, right? We better be. But our purpose is leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus because we run on God like a car runs on gasoline. And everybody um, needs, everybody has a need for God in their life. Everybody needs Christ. You and I, and we need more and more of him every day. So that's this very simple kind of, um, I guess, foundation for why our, we think of our mission that way, why we understand it that way. But of course, one of the questions is, so um, how, do we, how do we go about doing that? What are some practical things that we can go do to do that? And that's why we summarize it in four kind of basic ways. Now, there are a lot of things you can do to build and to grow your relationship with Jesus. And um, a lot of ways to think about that, a lot of ways that we should. But to make it really simple, we think about it in terms of four kind of things that we do together in community. Worship, grow, serve, and give in community together. And those things can help us grow in our relationship with, with Jesus. Lead us to a growing, deepening relationship with Jesus. Today, I want to look at the first two, worship and study. Worship, study, serve, and give in community and the difference that those make. So um, let's take a look. Here's the thing I want you to think about um, over the next two weeks, and I'll repeat it both times, is a writer, Henry Nowen, who is a Catholic spiritual writer, um, he said this about spiritual disciplines, which is something we could say just about like practices that we do to help grow in our relationship with Jesus. Because we don't grow in our relationship with Jesus only by um, feeling warmer and fuzzier, right? Um, we need to deepen our maturity. Uh, we want to have affection for God, but we need to be doing things that put us in a pathway to be growing more. And he said this, he said, spiritual disciplines, but we could think of it as just those simple, practical actions, spiritual disciplines in the Christian life is basically creating some space in which God can act. Creating some space in which God can act. In other words, in our life, you and I need to do things to create room so that God, um, so that we're present to God and God can come in and work within us to grow us in our faith. Now, can God work on us in spite of ourselves? Well, sure, in some respects, but most of the time, when God's working apart from us, he's working to get our attention. And once we give him our attention, then he's ready to start doing some work of growing us in our spiritual maturity and our relationship with Jesus, growing our trust, growing our, our obedience, growing our sacrifice, growing our love, all those sorts of things, growing us to, uh, to be Christ-like. So creating some space in which God can act, that's what, those, um, that's what our our disciplines or our pra practices or our, our actions do is they create space in which God can come in and act. And so today I want to look at two. I want to look at worship again and study. What do those do? What kind of space do those create 
where God can come in and act. Well, worship is so important. You're at worship, so I don't need to tell you to come to worship. So what I want to do is talk about what worship, um, what happens in worship that's so um, important that helps us grow in our relationship with Jesus. When we come to worship, we come and we create a space in which God can come and meet us here. Sometimes we're reluctant to come to worship because we're not sure we're in the right frame of mind. And if you've ever been in that place, I want to encourage you um, to just ignore that voice and show up anyway. Because when we come to worship, worship isn't a, only about being able to perfectly express how much we love and are grateful for God in our life. Worship is about expressing our faith and our praise and our love for God. That's part of it, of course. We hear it in the songs that we sing. We celebrate it in our, in our offering. We celebrate it in, in um, reading the scriptures and listening to what God would have to say to our lives. There's all kinds of ways in which we express our faith in God. But it's also about forming our faith as well. And so sometimes when we show up to worship, we could be in a better place and be prepared to be giving more and getting more out of worship. But if we show up, we put our place, ourselves in a place where God can come and act where God can speak to us through the hymns that we sing or through the prayers that we pray or through the scriptures that we read or through the table that we come to uh, share in so that God ends up forming us, uh, forming something in us that we really need. Maybe we need um, his grace to come home to our lives in a, in a particular way. Maybe we just need to have a fresh word that we're not alone, that God is walking with us. Maybe we need to hear God say that um, his promises, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Maybe we need um, to be in the healing presence of God and just let the Spirit come and show the love of God to us. Any given week, we have different things that we bring into the sanctuary with us. But the one thing we know is that we need the presence of God. And so... We may come and need to praise and to give thanks to God just to give our love to him for what he has done for us and for who he is. And we may need to come and put ourselves in the sanctuary of God and the presence of God to create a space where God can come and, and do something in us that we desperately need. So worship is about creating a space in which God can act. And when we do that on a regular basis, we, um, we get in a place where we can both give to God and where we can receive from him what we need. Worship is creating a space where God can act. And um, I remember growing up as, uh, as a young person in Northeast Texas, I grew up in Tyler, and Tyler was Dallas Cowboys country. Um, down in this area, it, sometimes it's kind of blended. You get a little bit of both, a lot of Houston, but also um, you never know where you're not going to see a Cowboys star somewhere or another. I don't know. You got some people who remember a few years ago when Harvey came through and there was an, a, a picture from HEB and people had needed to go. Well, of course, we all just made a run on all the grocery stores and supplies when Hurricane Harvey came through and there was a picture of an HEB and it was the... Um, it was the um, the uh, kind of uh, cooler styrofoam cooler aisle and it was completely gone except for one section of Dallas Cowboy themed uh, coolers and I was like well, Houston pride there we go all right I grew up in Tyler though and we were all about the Cowboys and for a long time I could not think you know I grew up thinking that starting the late worship service at 1050 was a normal thing to do I thought, and then later in life, I thought, why 1050? That is so weird. It's usually either like 11, 1030, 1045. No one starts something not on the quarter hour or half hour or full hour. However, if you live in Northeast Texas, you need to finish worshiping God about 1150 to have 10 minutes to get home so you can worship the Cowboys at noon, right? <laughs> I finally figured that out. So what's my point? My point is um, 
we're going to end up centering our lives on something. And so when we come to worship, that is an opportunity for us to center our lives once again on the grace of Jesus. And it is so much, um, it is so much easier to center our lives on our relationship with Christ through the week if we've been able to come and center our life um, our, on Christ once a week in worship when we gather together. Now, I know there's challenges with schedules. That's one of the things I'm glad that we've got an ability to have online church and all those kinds of things too. But that's, again, that's what we gain by creating a space in which God can act by worshiping together when we gather. So important. So worship is one of the ways where we create a space where God can act and grow us in our relationship with him. But then also study. And study, um, study is one of those things like worship where we can worship together and we can pray in our devotions. Um, study where we can gather together in Sunday school and Bible study, whether it's Sunday schools um, on Sunday morning, which we have Bible study on, on Thursday noon, or we'll have a pastor study again on Thursday evenings um, this fall as well, where we gather together and study and open the word and grow in our relationship that way. Study is so important, and I love the scripture here, that we are to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, by the renewing of our minds, renewing of our minds. You know, what you take into your mind is shaping how you think about the world. That seems like a simple and pretty obvious thing to say, right? But what we take into our mind and think about is what shapes and frames everything how, for how we understand the world. And most of us spend six and a half days, if we're in worship on Sunday morning, and maybe Sunday school too, six and a half days having our mindset shaped by our Facebook feed, by our news channels, by all the different things that we see, and way less time having it shaped by the scriptures and the word. We desperately need to have our minds renewed not to be conformed to the patterns of this world, but to be formed and shaped by the scripture, by the word of God. And to do that, we've got to bring it in. We have to study it. We have to get together with other Christians and, and wrestle with it too. Uh, one pastor has said that most people can face most things in life with a relationship with God through the scriptures and with other Christians. And we gather together and we study together, that provides a space in which God can do some work. God can act to grow us and to renew our minds. Think about it this way you are what you eat, right? That's what we know with our bodies. Our minds are what we think. And when we bring things into our mind to think about, to ruminate on, to shape how we understand things, that makes a huge difference. Garbage in, garbage out, but nutrition in and good stuff comes out. It's so important. Um, when I was a child, again, one of the favorite things that we discovered, it came out when we were kids, and then they made movies about it and all that kind of stuff, but were the Transformers. Boy, that was amazing when those were brand new. And my brother and I got, we got Optimus Prime, the big rig truck, and then we got Bumblebee, who was a little VW van, and it was so cool, because they weren't just like all the other little Hot Wheels cars that we played with. Um, they were like Hot Wheels cars and G.I. Joes all mixed into one. It was amazing, because you could pull them apart different ways, and they would turn into robots, and we thought that was just super cool. So every time we got allowance, we wanted to go to Target and buy more Transformers, right? Um, but there was a tagline for Transformers, right? Transformers, of course, they were battling the Decepticons, but the Transformers were more than meets the eye, more than meets the eye. It looked like one thing, but it could really transform and turn into something else. And we're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. 
that when Christ comes and works in us, when we are worshiping him, when we gather to, worship, to offer ourselves to the one who offered himself for us, and when we um, gather to study and to have our mind renewed and shaped by his word, then that has a transforming effect in our whole person, our mind, our heart, our whole soul. And we really do become more than simply meets the eye. We walk around looking like anybody else, but on the inside we have this growing relationship with Jesus that has the power to sustain us, has the power to give us purpose and hope and a future. Our mission as a church is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus, and that never stops for every, any one of us. Because you and I run on God the way that a car runs on gasoline. We need him in our life. And so the way that we can make a space for God to come in and act and to grow and mature us, two of those are when we gather to worship and we gather together to study together. Because that doing it together fuels doing it in our own individual walks personally as well. Let us pray. Oh God, we, um, we want to be transformed by your grace. We want to be uh, filled up with you so that no matter what we go through in life, we'll, our tank will never run empty. Lord, we want to be a faithful church. So I pray that you would work in us by your Spirit that we might um, engage in having a growing relationship with you and in leading others to a growing relationship with you. Let that be our heart's desire. And would you come and would you do that transformative work in us to make us more and more like Jesus? We ask this in his holy name. Amen. As we continue our worship, we gather today for the celebration of Holy Communion. So would you turn with me again to um, page 13 in the hymnal as we prepare to celebrate together. Would you join me at the great thanksgiving? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here. 
and on these gifts of the bread and the wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Would those assisting and serving communion come forward at this time? Will you come as you're directed by the ushers? we have peace with God. Go forth to be peacemakers in his name. Amen. Christ, we know the grace of God the Father. Go forth to be people of grace in his name. Amen.
God, we have been born anew into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Go forth to be a people of hope. Amen. Christ, we have peace with God. Go forth to be a people of peace. Amen. Would you join me in your bulletin at the prayer after receiving communion? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our closing hymn. Our hymn of commitment is number 176 in your hymnals, Majesty. Let's all sing together.
so as you go forth this week, whether you're a student going back to school, if you're a faculty, staff, um, administration person who's been back a little bit, we're going to keep on praying for you. Um, let's have a great showing on Tuesday and on Wednesday for um, our prep and our, our serving for the, the luncheon for, the, for Dayton ISD, and we'll, have a, we'll be excited about that. As you go forth this week, think about this. Think about um, the things that we do to create some space where God can act. Create some space where God can act. We gather together, we do that in worship and study. When we go to depart, we do that through our devotions and through our reading. So create that space this week. Let us go forth with this blessing and benediction. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of his Holy Spirit at work among you. Go in the peace, the power, and the presence of Christ to be his witnesses. Amen.